Hey, I hope everybody's well, had a good week, and uh, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. <sighs> Grace Heavenly Father, we thank you for once again bringing us all home safely, watching over each and every one. Lord, we pray for Sister Teresa, Lord, that they figure out what's wrong with her head. I could give them a few clues, Lord, but anyway, help her with the pain, and uh, we'll thank you for it. Lord, pray for Brother Tommy, Lord. Uh, he's uh, probably feeling rough, too, still trying to recoup from her, the week. And, uh, Lord, I pray for all the folks in the church. I pray for the young people and and uh, that were there at church last night. And Lord, I thank you for uh, the work that Sister Teresa did, even feeling bad, uh, fixing the dinner and, and everything for the people. And Lord, I thank you for watching over my wife. And Lord, she seems to be getting a little better. And I thank you for that, helping her. And uh, Megan, Lord, with her sinuses. And Lord, uh, seeing you help her a little this week. We thank you for that and myself. Lord, I pray now that you'd watch over us and keep us, help us, Lord, to share the word of God tonight that uh, folks would get a blessing from it, maybe encouraged. We we'll thank you for that. We we'll pray for Brother Raj and Lord that you'd touch him. And uh, Lord, it's good to hear. I'm glad he got his COVID shot for himself. And Lord, I pray for Rush Limbaugh and his cancer treatment. Lord, I pray that you would help them to recover and Lord we need them out there now more than ever uh, conservatives Lord this country I, I'm telling you Lord these people in Washington are wicked I mean vile wretched wicked I mean just what they're doing to this country destroying this nation Lord they're just full of devils and but Lord you allowed them to be there uh, Lord, give us wisdom in our part and what we should do. Uh, Lord, transvestites, sodomites, uh, Lord, in the government, uh, buttwitch or buttig or buttrug, whatever that Indiana uh, mayor was, and now he's in the, in the White House doing work. Lord, it's just disgusting, the, the vileness and the immorality Lord, that's uh, being brought in, and Joe Biden, Lord, I know he's the president, but he is, he is so vile and wretched, and the people he's got running him, Lord, uh, he's not smart enough to be that stupid, so <laughs> there must be people behind him driving him. Lord, I pray for this country. I pray that you'd help our country and uh, bless it, and Lord, help us to get back to some normalcy soon, and uh Father, watch over all our relatives, our cousins, our nieces, nephews, and our aunts, our uncles, brothers, sisters, husbands, and wives, and Lord, uh, grandchildren and children and great-grandchildren. Lord, help us to be able to encourage a little bit tonight, Lord, and uh, with the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. All right. Well, let's see what she's got tuned up today. Right for a 
Psalm chapter 33, what I'm going to do tonight, Lord willing, is I uh, just want to pick up some of the promises in the book of Psalm. And so we're going to start in chapter 33, and uh, we'll just pick up a couple of verses, chapter 33, and then I want to read chapter 34. We love the Psalm, uh, but I don't know where else to go. I go to the book of Psalms, uh, started trying to memorize it, and then I got preoccupied and, and uh, never did finish it. We did get Psalm chapter 1, and I think I was on 2, and then Psalm 119, uh, verse 1 through 8. And, but it's a beautiful book, and uh, a lot of the prophecies are of the Lord, just like we know in Psalm 18, and Psalm uh, 16, Psalm 116, dealing with the Lord's suffering in hell and all that he went through so he could redeem a wretched old bunch of people like us. Amen. Uh, 
Pray for this customer of ours named Jason. He came in today and Brother Tommy put a turbocharger on his truck engine and and uh, Tommy said invite him to church and he says he go I go to church he said where do you go and he says he went to the Mormon church and so that opened up some things he said he likes to discuss things he don't like to argue but he likes to discuss and he uh, sat there and listened why I mentioned to him that the word of God in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 6 says that if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, let him be accursed. And I said the, the uh, Mormon religion was founded on the fact that the fellow, Joseph Smith, he must have been on some kind of desert drug or something. But anyway, Joseph Smith uh, saw a vision of an angel whose name was Moroni. We call him Boney Moroni. They get upset with it, but I didn't do that to this man tonight because I wanted to talk to him and he was willing to listen. And uh, anyway, this fella Moroni was an angel. And he had some golden tablets and he gave them to Joseph Smith and therefore outsprang the Book of Mormon. Uh, the Mormons are big into the Masonic Lodge, uh, the, the elders are, and we've dealt with them out in Laramie, Wyoming, and, uh, out there in Thule, Thule Lake, Utah, or right outside of Salt Lake, dealt with them many times, but, uh, I said, you all say that you believe the King James Bible. They said, well, yeah, we do use the King James Bible. And I says, and the King James Bible says that though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you other than we preach, let them be accursed. And I said, so the Mormon religion has a curse on it because they're cursed of God. Why? Because they're taking something, a different gospel that was received by a so-called angel and uh, the Bible says, for no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And what a lot of people don't realize is that angels are men, not women. Uh, and angels do not have wings. Seraphims, cherubims, uh, they have wings. And Lucifer, as the devil, before he fell, had a uh, halt, exalted position in heaven. He was the anointed cherub that covered. He was over all the other cherubs. So in order for uh, him to transform himself into an angel of light, he had to get rid of them wings somehow. And of course, you remember the toys that uh, years ago that came out called Transformers, where uh, a creature could be turned into a car or truck and, and back and forth. So, you know, here they ha are. They have this... Uh, religion based on a vision uh, of an angel that told them where there were some golden tablets. And the Bible tells us to try the spirits, see if they be of God. Well, if you were trying that spirit and you were trying it, the only thing you had to try it with is the word of God. And so if you were trying that spirit, you would see and understand that that was not of God. Amen. That it was straight out of hell. But there's so many people out there that fall for that religion, just like the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons. And I mean, just there's many of them out there. Uh, but if you were to try the spirits and compare scripture with scripture, then they would have to admit that what they have is wrong. This man listened and uh, hopefully, maybe uh, he's a new customer. Hopefully over a period of time, we'll be able to uh open his eyes to the fact that he's following a false religion. Amen. So you pray for him. His name is Jason. Anyway, the Bible says in Psalm 33 and verse 12, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. You know, America was blessed when we were founded on Christian principles, no matter what the devils on the left say. We were founded on Christian 
principles, no matter what the atheists say. Uh, they're probably Democrats, amen. But uh, he says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Our nation has been blessed. Uh, people have uh, in power have, and those that have written our constitution and our declaration of independence and all, they invoke God's blessings upon this and upon this country. And our laws were set up after the order of God's laws. And uh, we were a very blessed nation, a very privileged nation. If you look at us today, I mean, for four short years, we had a president. Uh, doubt that he was saved. I hope he gets saved. Pray that he will get saved. But uh, we had a president that did seek after some of the things of the Lord in his decisions. And God's blessed us for those past four years. But we're fixing to really have some rough times in our country. And that brings me to the, this verse here, verse 18 in chapter 33, it says, behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him upon them that hope in his mercy. And look at this to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Do you know that no matter what goes down in this country, if you're saved and you're walking right with the Lord, like you're supposed to, You've got nothing to worry about. You're not going to go hungry. Amen. He's going to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waited for the Lord, for he is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. And I've seen the Lord when things were rough, times were tough. Uh, I remember my son saying back in 08 when the, the uh, recession hit, depression really, when all that hit, I remember pulling out on the interstate and it was deserted. There's hardly any traffic. Uh, you could go down the main drags of our, our uh, small towns and our cities and it was basically empty. Uh, hardly anything moving, any traffic. I remember when I was on county council, I was pushing for Amazon to bring in one of their uh, warehouses here because it was going to provide jobs. And at the time, uh, people were out of work. They needed work. And uh, anyway, I remember how it was. And, and it, for everybody else, people were coming to me, it seemed like every day, one, two people, you know, looking for a job. Can you give me a job? And, and uh, we had to let 11 people go when that thing first hit. But uh, my son said that he was fortunate enough to keep his business open and did better doing those years of recession than he did before. Amen. What is that? To deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Amen. Uh, it was the subject of tithing. My... Uh, my son, even if he missed the tithe, he would mark it down that he owed it. And as soon as it came in, he'd give it. And I used to tell people all the time that he started tithing when he was about 10 years old. When I first got saved, he was about 10 years old. And he learned uh, of tithing and he tithed off everything he did. His grass he cut, whatever he did, he tithed. And the Lord blessed him for it. And, and I still believe that works. I don't care if you're lost or saved. You, you uh, stick to some of the things that the word of God says. And those promises are based on God. Uh, you don't have to be saved <laughs> to receive those, some of these blessings. Uh, hopefully you are or you, or you will be. But God blesses. And, you know, a lot of folks, uh, when it comes to tithing and their bills come due, uh, they haven't saved up during the month to make their, their bill or something, or they have a big bill come up, they'll cut God first. Amen. Uh, I seen my son write paychecks on Friday, hoping that the mailman would bring something in by Saturday or Monday. Amen. And he's never had to worry about it. It's always showed up and God has blessed him abundantly for that. So Bible principles work. Uh, whatever they may be. 
But again, he says in verse 18 of chapter 33, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. And on chapter 34, he says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Do you know that the Bible says that God inhabits our praise? Amen. God inhabits our praise. How often do we praise him during the day? And he says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened. And their faces were not ashamed. He said, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. I like verse seven, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. These are some precious promises, folks. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. He said, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come ye, children, hearken unto me. I will teach you to fear the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? This is what he says. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Amen. What did he say in verse 12? What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? And he told you what to do. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Why? He says, because the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And his ears are open unto their cry. You see, if we're doing what we're required to do as children of God, as Christians, we've got no fear of want, nothing. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Didn't say we wouldn't be without trial and tribulation. He, Peter says, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice, amen. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Amen. These are some precious promises in the Psalms. I want to jump ahead to verse or chapter 36 and verse 1. He said, the transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before their eyes. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. That's some of the wicked. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise and to do good. This is the ones that have left the ways of the Lord. Amen. They're not knowing them. He devises mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. Doesn't that sound like what we have in Washington now? They don't abhor evil. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are a great deep. O Lord, thou preservest man and beast. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. That's his house. Amen. And thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. 
Well, isn't that some promise? He said, for with thee is the fountain of life. Wasn't Ponce de Leon uh, looking for the fountain of youth when he landed in Florida? I mean, here it was the whole time. The problem was he was Spanish, probably a Catholic. <laughs> He's still looking. Anyway, they shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the rivers of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. O oh, continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee, and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me, and let not the hand of the wicked remove me. There are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. He tells us in verse thir or chapter 37, this one I love. He says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and withereth as a green herb. You know, David David said that he didn't understand how the wicked prospered. Now, I'm ad living here. I don't have the, the verse uh, verbatim. But uh, he said that the wicked seem to prosper and things go wrong for the for the righteous. And But yet he said, he said he uh, worried about that until he went into the house of the Lord. Then he understood their end. Amen. He understood their end. So then he realized how blessed he was. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You, did you see that? Verse four, delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You know why he can do that? He can do that because he knows if you delight yourself in the Lord, the desires of your heart are going to be right along with his will. Amen. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteous as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Then he says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, for evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, place and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnashes upon him with his teeth. Well, I tell you what, you can see that in Washington. Amen. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. Well, I'm telling you, the day of judgment is coming. Now, I don't want to see anybody die and go to hell, but I sure like to see that mess in Washington straight now. Well, you see how all the swamp creatures came running back out. And you just like flooded right back into the swamp. They couldn't wait. He said, the Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay, slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in evil time, in the evil time, and in the days of famine they sh shall be satisfied. Do you see that? There's another reference to him taking care of us in a famine. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke, shall they consume away. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. 
The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord holdeth him by his hand, with his hand. I have been young, and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful, and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil, and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land, and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart, none of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous, and seeketh the slain. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Amen. We're going to see it. few more verses, we're done. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Sound familiar already? Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I saw him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. And that's some of the promises of the word of God to God's people. Amen. And so even though we see what's going on in our country, if you're right with God, if you're saved, and your relationship is right with him, you've got nothing to worry about. Amen. Oh, we'll have troubles and tribulation and all that, but he'll be there to walk us through it. Amen. All right. Well, I hope you got something out of that. I'm going to uh, pray and we'll close out. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the reading of that word tonight. We thank you for your precious promises. Lord, help us to walk uprightly and Lord, according to thy word. And Lord, watch over all our loved ones, our family members. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. For